This demonstration is called the Rainbow Flask. It's one that I use three times probably every year with the different classes. Um, what I have is a selection of six glasses. Now you could use beakers, but I already have some clear colorless liquid in them when the students come in or when the parents come in. I also have a flask, again, of a clear colorless liquid. So at some point during the beginning of the year, where I first use this with students, as we introduce the course, I say to them, well, you probably want to know how you can do better in this course. And so let me try to answer that question for you using some chemicals. And so I'll put on my goggles so that we do safety. Now, I know that each of you come to class, and that's why I use this class, with something in you. You come to class with something already there. The course, which is represented by this flask, again with a clear colorless liquid, represents the content of the course. Now, as you come to class, you're going to interact with this course. Now, each of you will interact with the course in a different way. Well, let's take this as an example. The interaction produces something. Now, that will be different, perhaps, for each of you, but we've produced something here that is red. And that reminds me to tell you that if you're going to do well in this class, you make sure that you have read your textbook. I know that's a bad pun, but the students will like it, and they'll get it, perhaps, and it will help things as you go along, because we will use a lot of puns. That way, I can also tell if the students are paying attention. But it's good that you have read your book. Otherwise, you cannot perform well. Now, the second glass, maybe a second student, would interact with the same content in perhaps a different way, producing an entirely different result. This orange color reminds me to tell you to try and organize your lives, to set schedules so that you can be in class every day. It is important that you are with us each day so that I can always say, aren't you glad you came to class? I know it's terrible. They get worse. But I do want the students to be there. And I want the parents to know that it's partly their responsibility as well when I do it with the parents to help the students organize their lives so that they can be in class. Let's go on vacation perhaps at a different time, schedule the dentist appointment some other time after school. All of those practices, they need to be in class. Aren't you glad you came to class? Each and every day there should be something there that will make you glad. Well, the third glass. Ah, yellow. At some point, the students begin to recognize a pattern, red, orange, yellow, and they'll begin to starting to participate with you and start suggesting what the next color might, might be. And that's an important thing because it's reinforcing the idea that they came to class with something already in them. They came to class knowing something. And then they interact with what I bring to them. Well, the yellow color is to remind me and to remind you not to be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. That's the way we're going to learn. Now, what do you think? I'll ask the students. And they're ready. You've got them hooked. They know what's going to happen, they think, and they'll make predictions. But it's always nice to have the prediction fulfilled. Green. Green. That's to remind me to tell them to go to your room and study. Go to the library. Go to some place where it's quiet so that you can interact with the content at your own pace, without interruptions, without distractions. And also, you should go to the internet or to some other source to get help. You're not in this course alone. Many people have been here before. Others uh, are available for, for help. I'm available for help. Go get help. And also, be a self-starter. Get up and go. Don't sit there and wait for something to happen. You are in charge. Make it so. Go. Get help. And by now they're all ready. You know that this one will turn blue. Blue? Why that? Well, this is probably the hardest course, I tell them, that you've taken so far in your educational career. Sometimes it's not going to turn out the way you hope. You'll have to admit that you blew it. That's all right. You're allowed to make mistakes. It's when you run into those mistakes, the edge of your knowledge, that you're ready to learn. 
forgive yourself, go on. You blew this one, don't blow the next one. Learn from your mistakes, know what you can do next time better. And finally, purple, the royal color, the color of kings and queens. And that's how I want each of us to treat each other, as kings and queens, so that we treat each other with respect and politeness. We are royalty. Well, in the end, in the end, even though there will be storms along the way, there is a rainbow. There's a promise at the end. You will have developed a spectrum of abilities that you may not even know you have at this point. Hang in there. You can succeed. And you will be the rainbow in your future. That's about the way I would use it with the students and also uh, with parents at Open House. Let me explain some of the content. At some point, somebody will ask, well, there are only six colors there. I thought it was Roy G. Biv. Where's the I, the indigo? Well, it turns out that Newton had to invent that indigo color so that he could get the seven colors. There were seven at that time visible planets. There were seven days in the week. There are lots of references in numerology to the magic number of seven. And so the color indigo is invented. Because what I have here, the chemistry of this then comes back to the student, having seen the demonstration once, we'll see it again when we come back to the section on acids and bases, especially the area of indicators. Because what we have here are three different indicators. One indicator, phenylphthalein, that turns red in the presence of a base, which is what I have in here. The second indicator, which I have in here is paranitrophenol. Now, paranitrophenol turns yellow in the presence of a base. And finally, the third indicator, which I have in this glass, is thymolphthalein. And thymolphthalein turns blue in the presence of a base. And so in order to make the other colors, simply mixing the three indicators to get the orange and the green and the violet. Mixing those three primary colors gives us the six colors of the rainbow. In doing this demonstration, I already had water in the cup. As I prepare the demonstration, I then add an indicator. The indicator I'm going to use to show you is this paranitrophenol, because as you see, it has a slight color already. Now you'll want to experiment around on your own and try to find the number of drops that you need to add in order to give you the color that you desire. And that's a little bit of experimentation and playing around. But you see that the solution already has a kind of a yellowish tint. Now I don't want that yellow tint when I present the demonstration to the students. And so I will add a drop of hydrochloric acid. That shifts the pH back to the acid end, and the color goes away. And we now then have the clear colorless solution so that it looks like all of the others. That's what I call the rainbow flask, and that's how I present it. Thank you.